So things have been progressing nicely. We're ready to go on to our next steps at five, where we're going to add our first many-to-many -many relationship. And uh, before we do, though, uh, we have some feedback from our client, right? Always good to get their feedback every once in a while. They've asked for a couple things. They don't want to see the email address on the main patient index page. It's still on details and other places. They can get it there. Uh, just think it's a little too cluttered on the index. We're going to take that off. And they also want more sample data, right? More uh, seed data to get a uh, feel for how the app will look when you have more than a handful of records in it, right? So we're kind of addressing this as sort of the 5A uh, before we get into the actual many-to-many -many itself. So here we have the index page open. Remember, this is the last thing we did is for the expected, uh, uh, sorry, for the medical trial, that nullable foreign key. Right? We actually show the word yes or no, but if it's yes, we've added this bit of code so we have the actual name of the trial available when you hover over the word yes as like a tool tip. Okay, so take out the email address. Well, that's easy. Okay, just... Oh. Got to be careful I select the right amount of text. Okay, there we go. Just take it out here in the for each loop and the heading for it as well in the table head section. There we go. So that's the first change that they asked for. All right, so we're done that. So let me come back to seed data. Now we remember where we do that in our medical office initializer. Here's where we start adding seed data. Just to quickly recall then, <clears throat> right now I've got this uh, uncommented. So I'm just going to comment that and ensure deleted. I don't need that all the time. So I don't want to re recreate the database uh, if I don't need to. Just reviewing, we have a few doctors we've added, we have a few medical trials we've added, and we have, what, a hand, four or five patients that we've added here. One, two, three, four, right? Okay, so we've hard-coded those. Now, <clears throat> my first thought was, well, if we're going to start using some code to generate large numbers of doctors and patients and so on, maybe I should just take this out all together. But I decided to leave it because <laughs> sometimes, you know, we're going to use sort of random values, right? Uh, to help create the combinations of names and so on. So sometimes it's kind of nice to know that, hey, I'm going to have a doctor named Gregory House and Charles Xavier or whatever, right? And patients like Fred and Wilma Flintstone and Barney Rowe. So I kind of like to leave those. Might as well have that code there and we'll just add more, more doctors and patients using our random approach type of thing. Okay. All right. So uh, I am going to, I've mentioned a couple times now of using random, right? So I'm going to need, that's the first thing I'm going to add here, a new random random, okay, <clears throat> to give me the ability to generate random values, right? Uh, so I'm going to leave the doctors alone. In terms of medical trials, I'm really just going to add a couple more, right? I don't think I need a huge number of these, but I did some research, found out names of some actual trials. So I'm just going to replace that with the code in my copy-paste file. It just gives me a few more to choose from. Okay, and the patients, that's fine. I'm going to leave these ones alone that are there so far, right? So it's basically after that, I'm going to start adding some new code, okay? Once again, let me emphasize, I could take out that those blocks of code using add range for some doctors and patients, and I'm going to add to it, though. So I'm going to leave it in place. All right, now for the doctors, what I'm going to do is we're going to add more doctors. I'm going to have an if because I don't want to run this multiple times, right? We do have some some code in place already to make sure that if the tables are are empty, then we will run our code. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and seed some, right? Okay. So here, if the doctor count is less than four, then I know I just have those original three records, and I'm good. All right. And I don't want to run this more than once because there's a lot, awful lot of doctors being created here. I don't want to duplicate it all. So what I'm doing is I have collections, arrays, essentially string arrays of first names and last names. And our approach is going to create every combination of first and last name together. So for example, I'll pick a first name, Charlie, right? So I'm going to have a Charlie Hightower. I'm going to have a Charlie rooms fun they're going to have a charlie jones blogs etc cetera, etc cetera, all the way down the line right and then the same thing for lucy violet well, all of them right so that's one way to get lots and lots of values generated so we do that with a nested nested for each loop right we're going to loop through all the last names and inside that for all the first names and as we do all that looping <laughs> don't get loopy we're going to create a doctor each time through so the doctor will have the current first name the current last name 
and I want to put something in the middle, right? So I don't want to use the first letter of either the name. So I figured just by use it, treating the name as a character array, right? That way I can put this indexer here. Now zero would be the first character. So one would be the second character. So the second character of the last name, okay, converting it to a string and uppercase, that's going to be stored as my middle name. That's it. So just give me lots and lots of doctors. Now, uh, I missed some code. Got to be careful with my copy-paste business. Right? There we go. <laughs> if I hadn't called save changes, <laughs> all those doctors wouldn't have actually been inserted into the database. And I just have the original three going forward. Okay. All right. Be careful. It's easy to make mistakes like that. Okay, that's one thing I like about this uh, new option here in Visual Studio. It shows me sort of the code block that I'm currently in, right? Like if I go higher, okay, then I'm in the, that one about the if for patients and so on and so forth. And it uh, works very well. Let's me know roughly where I'm at, right? Okay, so after adding those doctors, now before I go on to start adding patients, <laughs> I'm going to have something close by and handy in code here. I'm going to insert some code they're going to do a couple things for us. So we've created these doctors and these medical trials, right? Each one has a valid primary key. Now I could guess that they might be one, two, three, four, etc., but it might not, right? So that's not a safe guess, right? So what I can do, like what we did in the past, is we would do a query going and getting the ID for a given one, right? What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a collection, okay? In this case, an array of integers, okay? for all the actual valid values for the primary keys for all the doctors. So I do that with this link query, uh, context.doctors, just selecting the primary key, the ID. I do dot to array, and that creates an array, in this case, of integers. So I store that in my doctor IDs, right, right here. And just for efficiency, instead of counting multiple times, I'm going to be using the length of this array a few times, so I'll just store that right here in an integer variable. Same idea here for medical trials. Okay, I just go to the context, medical trials, selecting all the primary keys, and store them in here, right? That way I know I can use any member of this array of integers, and it's going to be a valid primary key value, right? In this case, for the medical trial, or up here for the doctor ID. So that just gives me a lot of things close by and handy to help me use them while I go forward. All right, so let me get my next chunk of code here. Okay, so what do we see? Well, basically, <laughs> similar idea. Uh, six, I think I only had four, so I'll say less than five. Anyway, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's, it's gonna, if I run this, then it's going to be way more than five or six or anything else. So it'll pretty much be able to tell. All right, similar idea. I've got a whole bunch of first names and last names. I tried to get different collections of these names. And then I'm going to grab a count of how many first names I have. Because what I'm going to do is I don't want to do the same thing exactly, right? That would just be huge amounts of data, more than I really want, right? And so I'm going to instead randomly select, it's just a variation on the approach, randomly select a certain number of first names. And then I'll only create combinations of that select group of first names, right? Just to make the data look a little less repetitive. Okay, now I'm going to need a birth date. So I'll grab a start date of birth and I'll measure back in time from here using random values. The counter, it, that's going to play a role because uh, I'm going to use it to help me add values, not just medical trials, values to uh, patients, but not every patient, right? Uh, used to help add values to some patients. OK. All right, so I will go through all the last names. I'll make a patient for every last, with every last name. Actually, I'm going to make five patients for every last name. So what I'm going to do, I've got lots of first names. I have more than five, otherwise I could get into trouble here, right? Well, okay, the count of the ones I've selected is less than five. I'll keep on going. I guess I'm going to do four, right? <laughs> right? If it's less than five, it's going to be four. Anyway, so we'll go and we'll get a handful of first names. And then we'll randomly select them and add them to this 
uh, hash set of strings, okay, selected first names. So remember, I'm looping through every last name here. So I'm going to randomly pick a handful of first names, go through each one of the ones that I've chosen, and construct a patient for each one. First name, last name, bada bing. Middle name, same approach, second character of the last name, capitalized, away we go. Now the OHIP number, what I'm doing here, I'm guaranteeing I start off with a random number from two to eight, okay, two stringing it, and then I pick a random number. By the way, these are not special. I just kind of made them up. I closed my eyes and hit the keyboard <laughs> a little bit, okay. But it does mean I'll get a random number with so many digits in place and with this one added to the front and I two string it and that should guaranteed give me a valid looking, at least in terms of the type of characters, the number of characters, an OHIP number I can use. Similar approach for the email, okay. I'm gonna take the first two letters of the uh, first name and then the last name concatenated together and then a random number, right? Uh, this is a format we sometimes see used. I think even your college email address will have something like that, a, a letter or two from your initials, the last name, and then a couple of digits or more uh, following that, and then the rest of the standard email address afterwards, right? There we go. So that's going to create some reasonable looking email addresses. Phone number, same idea, guaranteeing a certain value as a digit to start with, and then the same range okay, of uh, values to come after. By coincidence, they're both uh, the same number of digits. All right, expect the yearly visits. Now this is just a byte, okay? So I do convert it to a byte, random.next between two and 12, right? And that's within the bounds of what you're supposed to have for expected yearly visits. Date of birth, oh, so here's that one where we actually are gonna subtract, right? Remember, start of the start date of birth is today, whatever day we run the code. So we're gonna add a negative number of days, right? That's where that negative sign comes in. Don't forget that, or <laughs> you'll be predicting dates in the future, which is kind of silly and wouldn't even work, right? Okay, so we just we'll randomly choose a value. So at least 60 days in the past. So no, we won't have any newborn babies entered here, I guess, but uh, 60 days old up to this many days old <laughs> type of thing. So we'll subtract that number of days from the current date, and that should give us a reasonable value for a range of birthdays, right? Now for the doctor ID, everyone gets a doctor, right? So we'll just randomly select a doctor ID out of that collection, that uh, array of valid primary key values for doctors that we generated earlier. And that's it for everything except what about that nullable, right? Some patients we're going to put into a medical trial and some we won't, okay? So that's where this uh, modulus function comes in. Remember how that works in math? You know, divided by this, does it give you an even amount, right? In other words, it, is it an even multiple, like three, six, nine, and so on, right? So if the modulus function returns zero, right, then we're gonna, okay, we'll add a medical trial to this patient. We'll enroll them in some medical trial. Which one? We'll randomly pick one, right? That's where random not next comes in with the count as the maximum value. It never, never reaches the maximum value. It's always at least one less. Okay, that way we're assigning about a third of the patients into a medical trial. Don't forget to increment the counter and away we go. And then we can add the patient, right? We go in context.patients.add, passing the patient object we built, right? I'm gonna to try to save changes each time. Now, if there was a duplicate OHIP, for example, it might fail, in which case my catch, you know, just really keeps me from crashing and away I go. Okay, so this last little bit, we're really adding partially just to show you or demonstrate how you can execute raw SQL against the database, right? Basically what we're having here is that we didn't guarantee that every doctor had at least one patient assigned. So we're gonna have probably a few doctors in the system with no patients. Is that a problem? No, we could leave it that way. It wouldn't really cause any issues, but you know, it kind of makes sense that, well, if you're gonna have a doctor, why would you have a doctor that you don't assign patients to, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all of them from the system. Okay, so we'll do that by executing a query, a not exist query. So you did this back in term one, right? So basically uh, this is a correlated subquery here where we're deleting from the doctors, all the ones where it basically, it is not true that there are any patients, right? There not exists anything when we do this uh, subquery here, right? Where we pull from uh, patients where the doctors, as we do each one, the doctor's ID matches the foreign key for the patient, the patient doctor ID. Okay, if that comes back empty, so nothing exists in there, then we know that doctor does not have any patients and bada bing, we're gonna delete them, 
right? So that's an example, really. Half the point of having this here is to show you how to execute raw SQL. And that just also kind of cleans up the data so we don't have doctors without patients. And that should take care of it, right? Okay, so let's just give it a try and we'll see what the difference is when we run this. Uh, yeah, I should be all right there. Let me just go ahead and run. Okay, we're up and running. So if I go to doctors, look at that. Lots and lots of doctors. Now, very repetitive, right? As I said, you know, for the same last name, we have every one of the first names, et cetera. But it certainly gives us lots more sample data to work with. And of course, there were even more here, but we've deleted all the ones that don't have any patients, right? So every doctor here should have some patients and we can go to the details. And no matter who we pick, we should see some data here, right? Okay, coming to patients. There we go. Lots and lots. So you see the ages, eh, they worked out fairly well. I've got some young people, lots of old people, but nobody's so old that they should be dead already, I don't think. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't joke like that, but I did. Our visits per year, eh, reasonable looking range and so on in medical trials. So some of them are, right? And some of them aren't, right? Which is exactly the effect I was after. Of course, here are all the different doctors that are assigned to them as well. And we can go to details on a given patient and see all the details there. Okay, so good. So we're ready to move on. Now we're gonna add our many to many, but we want to satisfy those two requests from the client, okay, about uh, making that one change to the columns on the actual patient index and getting a lot more seed data in, in, uh, installed into the system. Again, it's just meaningless data in a sense, but it helps you know, check how the page is gonna look and how the layout works and so on and so forth. All right.